please introduce yourself, how old you are and what you do for a job? Uh, my name is Matthew, I'm 32 and I'm in landscape construct. Uh, what is your roles and responsibilities in your job? Uh, I'm self-employed, so I'm the boss and the workers, so I have to do everything. So I have to find the work, I have to quote the work, uh, then I have to organise all the materials, design it, build it, clean up, pack everything up and go to the next job. So I have to do everything from start to finish. <laughs> Uh, how long have you been in a landscaper and how long have you run your own business? Uh, I've been landscaping 12 and a half years and I've had my own business for four, four and a bit years. And what do you prefer, to be a business owner or working for someone else? Uh, depends which week you ask. Uh, <laughs> nah, when things, the freedom of working for yourself is good uh, for holidays and things like that. Um, you can take time off or work extra when you want to work extra or less when you want to work less, but uh, the extra responsibility means a few extra hours and uh, that sort of stuff. So a lot more organising. So they both have pros and cons. So, but yeah, I, I think I probably prefer working for myself. Um, was this your first job? Uh, no, my first job was uh, doing the checkouts at Coles. So was this your first job once you left school? Yes, this was the first job once I left school. I started an apprenticeship. And how did you find your apprenticeship? Uh, Seek, I think. I think I jumped on Seek back then and found a landscaping job that was relatively close. Applied, an interview, started within a week, I think. And when you did an apprenticeship, what did you have to do? Uh, so my apprenticeship was four years. Uh, I had to go to school one day a week for the first three of those years. Um, and every we do multiple classes, theory and practical. So you have to pass all of them as well as your boss sort of, you know, make sure you're learning stuff on the job. Uh, your fourth year, you get a bit more responsibility. Um, and then, yeah, you, once you do all that, you, once you reach your completion date, then your boss signs you off and you sign a contract and you're a fully qualified landscaper. So when you were in year 12, what subjects did you do and did they link to your career as a landscaper? I did, in year 12, what did I do? History of Evolutions. I did PE, Psychology, uh, hospitality, commercial cookery, and English. Uh, so no. No, not really. No, none of them no. linked to what you were doing. No, but I also, I studied two years of event management at TAFE before I started my apprenticeship. I was originally going to do something else, and then I decided to do an apprenticeship. So what made you look for an apprenticeship? Uh, uh, I wanted, oh, I like building stuff. So that was an interest of mine. Mm -hmm. um, but also I, I wanted to, event management meant I had to work sort of Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Um, and the other days I wanted to hang out with my friends. So yeah. <laughs> I decided that was not going to be a good <laughs> career path for me. So yeah. I, I wanted to do a job that was outside uh, and something that wasn't the same thing every day. So I, you know, brick laying's outside, but all you're doing is laying bricks. Whereas landscaping's outside, but some days you're laying bricks, some days you're doing decking, some days you're doing grass. So, that, you know, you get a bit of, um, yeah, variety. yeah, a bit of variety. Um, once you left school, you've done your apprenticeship. Once you've finished that, have you had to do any extra study? Uh, I, haven't ha I haven't had to. But there are other things you can do. Like you can, uh, through my apprenticeship, I've got a very basic uh, skid steer license, which gives me a license to drive certain machines. But you can, on your own, you can upgrade that to drive bigger and more elaborate machines. Um, you can also do design courses yourself. I, 
I'm not a very good drawer, so I didn't bother doing the design courses. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so I haven't upskilled, but there are avenues to upskill uh, within my trade. Uh, but the, it's mainly design aspects and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm sure there's probably certain elements you can do short courses on. Yep. Like if you wanted to uh, beef up your stonemason work, you could probably do a you know a weekend stonemason course to, to improve your stone walls and something like that. Um, so <coughs> as a apprentice, how much did you earn? Uh, I think my first year I got about eight dollars an hour uh and then it went up about two dollars an hour every year i think in my fourth year i was on about 17 dollars an hour and then once i signed off i was on 22 dollars an hour but i got given a car and a few other perks as well so so with the uh, someone that might look at doing landscaping it will come down to maybe their employer and how much yep. they pay. So there's a minimum award. So there's an award rate that they have to pay you. Um, but uh, your boss, you know, if he values you, will pay you probably above that award rate mm -hmm. to keep you because there's, there's plenty of people that do pay above that award. Yeah. Um, so basically you've got to make yourself valuable to your employer so he needs to keep you so then he pays you more that's yeah. that's sort of the idea of it and um, what about as a business owner would you earn more than what you would if you were an employee for someone else do you think uh it depends how good of a business owner you are yeah. the, the if you run a if you run a business well you sh you should generate more to generate more money you also uh, you can write off a lot more things on tax, which you guys will probably learn when you're a bit older. If you're mm -hmm. doing accounting at school, you might learn it. But um, uh, that helps that helps save you a lot of money come tax time if you are the employer, because there's a lot more expenses that are business class as business ex expenses. Yeah. So that that's that can help. Um, but it, you also, as an employer, you're taking on all the risk. So if something doesn't go well, uh, you don't get paid. Whereas if you're an employee, typically you're on a contract, you get paid either way. Yeah. The employer just has to deal with it. So, you know, uh, yeah, you, you definitely have the ability to earn more money working for yourself. It's just how good you are at it. And there's other factors as well being... Um, a business owner like you have insurances to pay yep. you would have um, you pay for your own petrol yep. you pay for your own tools your yep. own machines yep because I because I own all my tools and machinery I, I have to beef up my insurance to cover those tools and I've had tools stolen in the past so that's expensive as well whereas uh, employees Depending on the job, sometimes you don't have to supply your own tools, sometimes you do, but they typically own, the tools are owned by a business, so they're not, you have to look after them, but they're not really your responsibility. You have to try and keep them safe, but if they get nicked, you don't have to buy new ones, your boss does. So. Yep. Do you think um, there's a high employment opportunity to be a landscaper? Uh yeah, yeah, there's a lot of companies around. It's um, Is that hard for you as a business owner? To compete with other companies? Yeah, is that uh, something you think about? It is sometimes. I've got myself to a place where I get a lot of referrals, so I'm not competing against other businesses as much. Um, but it can be frustrating. You put a lot of time and effort into a quote, you know, hours. Um, just for someone else to come back with a quote that's slightly cheaper and they get the job and all your time's nothing. Yep. So that can be frustrating and you can have patches where you don't win a lot of jobs, just just luck of the draw and or you're maybe you're over quoting. So yeah, it And that takes time learning how to do all of that, being yep. a yep. business owner. That takes time, experience, a little bit of research. Um, if you can get your hands on a few other businesses quotes. You can compare how <laughs> yours compares to theirs. Uh, probably not the right thing, but it does help. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just takes time, trial and error. You know, you get to the end of the job and you made no money, you know, you have to charge more next time. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you've made squillions, then you've probably overcharged and someone, you've just ripped someone off. So you got to find the happy medium. That's it. That's it. <laughs> um, what do you find hard about your job? Uh, self-motivating. So if I don't show up on time, no one yells at me because I'm the boss. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you could... If you're not switched on, you could end up pressing snooze one too many times every day and then, you know, end up wasting all every day and not getting enough work done. So that's that's tricky. Um, just, yeah, keeping organised and on top of everything when you've got multiple jobs going and different clients you're speaking to and you're just running jobs and you're organising future jobs and just staying on top of all that and, uh, switching off at night, so you mm-hmm. still think about work a bit, so that's a bit tricky, but yeah. And um, what do you like? Uh, good when it's good weather, it's good fun to be outside, and uh, it's uh, it's good to see sort of if you if you go into a backyard that's just trashed and then you can turn into a really cool space, it's mm-hmm. uh, um, rewarding to see that at the end, so that's that's good. So um, what traits do you think someone needs to have if they're going to be a landscaper? Uh, hard working. Yeah. Uh, you need to be able to deal with the cold mm-hmm. and the heat because you're outside every day. Um, probably have to be able to deal with a bit of travel. You, you just got to go where the work is. Um, you got to be creative problem solve because you know sometimes you'll get a machine stuck in the mud or you plan to do something one way and it's just not possible you have to find a different way to do it so you're always figuring out solutions to problems you didn't plan for so that sort of stuff and last one uh have you ever thought about or could can you tell us where a job in landscaping may take you Ah, so there is competitions for apprentice, apprentices called World Skills, and they're run through the TAFEs. So uh, an apprentice I work with uh, got uh, one regionals, then one state, then came second in Australia for landscaping, end up getting flown to Japan to compete in uh, the, the international World Skills competition. They have it for hairdressing. They have it for just about every trade, there's a world skills competition. Mm-hmm. Not only is it a good way to travel, but really good on your resume. You know, you can get to go to places like uh, the Chelsea Garden, Flower and Garden Show, which is a pretty big deal there's, for landscaping. That's where really big time architects and stuff build some pretty crazy things that literally only stay up for a month and then they tear them down again. But that sort of stuff. It can also be quite broad. So you could do someone's front yard or backyard, but then you could do schools, you yep, could do definitely. kindergartens, yep. um, you could do parks. Yep, you can do domestic all the way up to commercial. So, yeah, you could be um, doing synthetic running tracks, anything like that, playgrounds, schools, uh, helping out national parks, that sort of stuff. Yeah, any number of things, all the way down to little courtyards even um, courtyards in apartment buildings, Mm. even doing little stuff like that. So, All right. Thank you. No worries.